So when you're looking for a miracle, it don't always come the way you expect. That's right. But if you hang in there, the Lord will show you something. Hallelujah. I got back yesterday around 2 o'clock. Drove from 11 o'clock that night. I had to stop in Buffalo. I had to get gas. And you know how that is. And I came home. Drove nonstop, so really, I didn't get no rest. Today, I've been kind of lingering around a little, but I wasn't resting. I went to my office, sat in my chair, and just started praying. I said, Now, God, in my strength, I can't minister. Hallelujah. So, Lord, I need you to give me a word because I don't know what to speak. Hallelujah. I called my wife and I said, what's the thing? She said, it ain't one. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that's good because then I could just go ahead and be free. But if it would have been a thing, I would be like, man, I figured something out. And so, right after I got the phone, my wife, Bishop called. And he said, how you doing, man of God? I said, I'm sitting here reading. I want to try to find what the Lord would have me to speak. I said, but God is giving me a word. I said, but do y'all have a theme? I was asking for a test in case. I got a little nervous. He said, no, man, just let God use you. I was like, thank you. <laughs> 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 and so when he told me how long they had been together, then I understood why the Lord said the true meaning of love. And today, I want to talk about love. Amen. Oh, y'all hear me. Amen. 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 I um, don't know what you mean to the Gospel of John. Y'all forgive me. I look at my phone a lot because I got a lot of scriptures in it. Y'all figure that out later on. <laughs> the Gospel of John, the 13th chapter. The 34th verse was right before Jesus was betrayed. The Gospel of John, chapter 13. A new commandment I give unto you that you love one another as I've loved you. And that ye love, somebody say love. love. Say it again. Love. Say it again. Love. love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples. And if you have love for one another, oh gracious Lord, our Father and our eternal God, we ask your Holy Spirit to speak through this young man servant. Speak through these lips of clay. Give strength to this mortal body in Jesus' name. We pray, thank God. Word our lips. Word our lips, God. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. May we see it. In the presence of the Lord. You musician, don't take off too far because I ain't gonna stand up here alone. What happened to this drum? Where's the drum? Where's the drum? Be right back. I don't work for them. Y'all can't be doing that. I dream of genie stuff. <laughs> I looked at you when you were playing, and I watched you when you went and sat down over there. And I was looking at you. Stand up. Don't sit down. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me. And the Lord said, His hand is upon you. Hallelujah. 
there's a great call in your life to ministry. And the Lord said, heed to his call. God is calling you. You hear me? Hallelujah, Jesus. God is calling you. Those that have wronged you, God said, forgive them. And let that stuff go. Because if you don't, it's going to hinder your walk. You understand? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. I was sharing with my church the year before last. Mm -hmm. I said it last year and I'm saying it now. I'm trying to get used to this fresh anointing that's on my life. It's like putting on a new suit. <clears throat> I'm trying to fit it right. the Lord the glory of God has been restoring Amen. gifts that I haven't seen in almost 20 years. Jesus. People yes. stood up in my church and testified and I give the Holy Ghost Rosh HaKadosh all the glory. So I say Rosh. Rosh. HaKadosh. HaKadosh. Meaning the Holy Spirit. Oh okay, some brother came from one of our ministries in Syracuse and testified. He had stage four cancer. It was his words. Went to his house, laid hands and prayed for him. And it was going to open him up to do major surgery to him. Give the Lord the glory. They did do the surgery, they did open him up. But the cancer was drying up. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus, my God. God. Hallelujah. When God elevates, that's when the major attacks from Hallelujah, the Jesus. I've been up on the more attacks this year than I've been in years. Mother got rushed to the hospital. Saying that she wasn't going to make it and told my sister Judy she was going to be in a state of a vegetable. Mm. When they said that, I didn't know what to do but pray. Amen. I called her, called my sister, and I said, put the, the phone to her ear. Mm -hmm. I told her, I said, now you fight. Mm -hmm. I said, you fight and you come through this. And I said, we'll pull it for you. I said, we love you. The third day, she came out of her coma. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Come on. So I was holding stuff. She got sick. I went back in the hospital about a month later, maybe a month and a half. And a week went by. Mm -hmm. they, from what I hear, they rushed her to the hospital from the house because she wouldn't wake up. And they thought it was the medication that it was given her. It, was, it, it, was, it did play a part because it was too strong. And I called her, called my sister, I said, put the phone to her ear. And I said, Mama, I love you. And I said, I'm asking you to forgive me for all the things that I've done. Thank you, Jesus. And the disappointments that I've made. I said, then yeah, not only that, God, I'm not God, but not only that. I said, the other thing is, 
I said, I forgive you for the things you did to me. Thank you, Jesus. And I said, and I just want you to know that I love you. She had been there three weeks. Mm -hmm. And my sister Judy said, after we hung up the phone, Mama was laying still all that time. He said, Mama moved her arm and moved her legs. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My wife knew me that I wasn't in the right frame of mind, so I wasn't trying to minister to the people. I put her up. I let her speak. And I, I just sat. <coughs> and then I had a revival coming up, and I had to go to this revival. I had a choice, either the revival or California. My wife said, let's go to the revival, honey. Just, just relax a little bit, go to the revival. So I went. And when I went, I got there that Wednesday, Tuesday night, I believe. Did I get there Tuesday night? Mm -hmm. I got there Wednesday. We got there Wednesday. The revival started that night. Preached a little bit that night. Did more teaching than anything else. Preached a little bit that Thursday night and that Friday. And I would do some more preaching. And I walked out, sat down in the pulpit. And when I sat in the pulpit, the phone rang. And I went and got my phone. And I saw that my baby sister Pam. And I don't never hear from Pam unless something's wrong. And I got it. I went to the dining area and I just held the phone. Held it just like this. Held it in my hand. And eventually I put it to my ear. And I said, yes. She said, I don't want you to worry about mama. Mm -hmm. She said, uh, mama won't be all right. She said, uh, Go ahead and do what you gotta do. You don't have to come here right now. Mama's home. Hallelujah. But what they had found out, she had had a massive heart attack. And uh, looking at the different things that's taking place, I want to say eliminate stress. Mm -hmm. uh, Whatever it is that's stressing you out, Hallelujah. Eliminate it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. By yeah. any means necessary. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say amen. 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 I'm not the one to tell people to stay in marriage and, and, and force you to I'm not going to tell you that because if you know that man whooping you or that woman whooping you and you're so stressed out you can't sleep, you can't rest and you don't know what to do. I'm not going to tell you to leave and I'm not going to tell you to stay but I want to tell you this much, it's not the spirit of God. Amen. Somebody amen. say amen. amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And so you got to do what you got to do to take care of you. Amen. Especially if you got kids. Amen. 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 So I'm not going to tell nobody you know you got a, you're in an abusive relationship you, 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 you women, y'all used to men jumping on you, but a lot of times women don't jump uh, on the husband. A lot of times verbally you're abusive to them. When you're verbally right. abusive to them, what ends up happening is that you can kill that man. That is the truth. Saying That's the truth. That's the truth. That is the truth. Sisters, forgive me, but I mean, I'm, I'm doing my best not to upset you, but I'm going to tell you the truth. Sometimes you need to be quiet. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. That's real. That's real. That's real. That's real. I hope that his wife said that he was showing me he showing that he was Because he turned sideways when he did. He was like, Amen. But the point being is this. When it's love, women, you get upset when a man loses cool, and then he ends up fussing at you. But you can't read between the lines when he's saying, that's enough. All right. 
Am I an art to Jesus? <laughs> I'm used to hearing y'all say something. <laughs> I was hear some serious nerves. <laughs> the Bible says it's better for a man to be on a house top than to be in a house with a nagging wife. Amen. Teach. Or a brawling wife. Yeah. Amen. Teach the word. Time when you got a nag, a nag will never admit that they're a nag. Teach Amen. the word. <laughs> 